वेलकम टू दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन हाइड्रोलॉजी एंड वाटर सोर्स इंजीनियरिंग माय नेम इज मल्लिकार्जुन या हिरेमट प्रोफेसर ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट इन के कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर टुडे इन दिस सेशन आई एल गोइंग टू डिस्कस वॉट हाइड्रोलॉजी इज आई मीन इट्स मीनिंग एंड डेफिनेशन and its applications along with hydrological cycle and importance of water and water budget okay let us start with our first slide yes these are the overview of by today's session first one is meaning and definition of hydrology then we will discuss about importance of water then world water budget then we will discuss hydrological cycle and thermologies or components of hydrological cycle and last one is applications of hydrology first let us see what is the exact meaning of hydrology hydrology is the word derived from greek word in greek hydros means water logos means study or science therefore hydrology is a study or science of water now we can define hydrology as this as the branch of civil engineering which deals with the study of water with respect to its occurrence distribution circulation on and below the earth surface as well as in the atmosphere this is the meaning of meaning and definition of hydrology now we'll see as this hydrology subject deals with the water what is the importance of water in our life you know we can hardly survive without air for few minutes and without water for few days if there is no water on earth planet there is no life on the earth planet so for existence of all the living organisms in the earth requires water so that's why we call water as the elixir of life or we can also call it as the nectar of life okay this is all about the importance of water next we'll move to next slide water budget world water budget as you know entire earth planet is covered by 70 percentage of water in the form of oceans sorry 97 percentage of water in the form of oceans and remaining 3 percentage in the form of fresh water among 3 percentage of fresh water Two percentage of water is locked in the form of glaciers and ice caps, and remaining one percentage in that also one percentage maximum amount of water is in the form of groundwater, and very less water is available as fresh water for drinking. for fresh water in the form of rivers lakes reservoirs and ponds so it is our duty to conserve the water for our next generation next we will move to hydrological cycle in this cycle how the water 
circulates you can discuss in by using this hydrological cycle as you know earth contains surface waters in the form of lakes reservoirs oceans ponds etc and due to solar radiation all the water bodies on the earth gets evaporated when that means they transform from liquid state to vapor state due to solar radiation and start moving in upward direction moving in upward direction and this process is called as evaporation this process is called as evaporation next certain amount of water also lost due to solar radiation from the vegetation that is from trees and vegetation this is called as transpiration this also starts moving upward and gets collected and stored in the form of clouds due to the process of condensation the water comes back to the earth surface in various forms like rain snow dew sleet mist etc and while coming back to the earth surface certain amount of water is absorbed by the vegetation like trees plants etc and this is called as interception then remaining water which falls on the surface first it fulfills the moisture condition of soil surface soil then it starts moving on the earth surface this process is called as surface runoff after some times the water starts percolating inside the earth surface and starts moving this process is called as subsurface runoff after this the water starts infiltrating inside the ground and reaches the underground water table this is called as infiltration so this is all about the hydrological cycle how the water occurs and how it circulates and how the distribution takes place this is all about the hydrological cycle you can see in the image all the processes and the rain which comes to the earth surface is in the form in various forms like rain snow dew mist sleet etc is called as precipitation so this is all about hydrological cycle next we will move to terminology or components of hydrological cycle yes first we will see evaporation evaporation is the process of loss of water through surface water bodies in the form of vapors due to solar radiation you can see in the image how the liquid or water transformed into vapor phase and moving in upward direction this is all about the definition or meaning of the evaporation next we will see transpiration see here you can see the tree 
due to roots roots absorbs water from the earth surface and that water transported to the entire body of tree or plants or vegetation due to solar radiation certain amount of water also gets evaporated from vegetation and this process is called as transpiration next we will move to condensation here you can i will give explain this with the one example just take a beaker heat it from the bottom put water in that beaker heat it from the bottom after some times you can see the water vapors gets lifted in upward direction if you place a lid or close the beaker with some lid some kind of lid after some times you can see the water droplets are appeared on the bottom of the lid this process is nothing but it is called as the condensation the same thing happens in the atmosphere when the water bodies gets heated up and starts moving upward in the form of vapors and stored in the form of clouds when the cloud cloud gets condensed the water drops or water falls on the earth surface this process is called as condensation next we will move to what is precipitation precipitation is a phenomena in which condensed water vapor fall on the earth surface under the influence of gravity in the form of rain hail snow or sleet you can see in the picture how the precipitation takes place or occurs next we will move to interception it is the process in which certain amount of water is absorbed by the vegetation during precipitation and is called as the interception surface runoff surface runoff is a term used to describe the flow of water from rain snow melt or other sources over the land surface and is a major component of the water cycle subsurface runoff process in which certain amount of water infiltrates and starts flowing under the earth surface when precipitation occurs next we will move to infiltration rain water that percolates into the ground and finds its way to reach ground water is called as infiltration next we will move to five civil engineers study this hydrology subject or what is the importance of hydrology or applications of hydrology hydrology is very important for civil engineers for for the following reasons first one is measurement of precipitation first application next one is determination of runoff next one is design of bridges dams and irrigation structures knowledge of hydrology is very much necessary next design of water supply systems design of sanitary sewer systems design of hydroelectric power points and prediction of floods prediction or control of erosion and sedimentation determining water balance of a region and last one is navigation these are all the applications of hydrology which are very much necessary for the civil engineers in the design of bridges dams 
laser wires, water supply systems, sanitary systems, prediction of floods, erosion control, prediction of erosion, sedimentation control and determining water balance of a region and for the navigations. Okay. With this, I conclude my first session on hydrology that I mean that is introduction to hydrology. In next session, we will discuss about the precipitation, its forms, its types and measurement of precipitation. And thank you for your patience listening and these are the references referred 